Okay, uh, you can just read this one. <laughs> Have you ever been in that situation? I'm starting with the, the uh, row view, uh, Angry Birds. Some of you have played Angry Birds. I'm seeing this pitch for, for an investor saying, okay, we want to do this thing with, with we have uh, birds and then we have pigs and then we want to shoot the, 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 the birds <laughs> and the pigs uh, and so on. And that is a rather crazy idea. And now today they have a lot of investment companies and so on building on this and there are still people playing their games and so on very much. So typically an uh, innovative idea. What most people don't know, perhaps, is that this was their 52nd trial, in a sense. There are 51 failed uh, innovations. Uh, but we can see that we have a production system and an innovation system. One of them is making money. The other one, the other system, is more for the foresight. There are different logics in this. This is where we exploit things. We get rewarded differently in this system than we do in the more ex uh, explorative, where we search for new things. Up there is about very much about doing the right, right things at all, and down there is very much about doing those things very right. And these systems, in different ways, interact, of course. And here, we talk about this heat transfer uh, between them. How can these really work together? How can we work both in the future and today and make these things work together? The pillars of this system this organization system is best practice, core competence, and the customer's voice. But the same pillars are the chains of the innovation system. So do only having the best practice it will, will not be good for the next practice. Just listen to the customers improving what they are saying they want. It's not seeing what they really need. And then core competence, of course, we have all our focus on having those type of engineers or those type, type of business developers and so on. Uh, then doing another type of business or another type of, of uh, technical solutions, whatever it will be, will need other type of competences. The leadership aspects of the innovation system, um, it's about relationship building. Instead of simplifying everything to saying, okay, this is exactly what the customer wants, and they have said it, complicating it, okay, is they, they saying this, but what their really needs are, are beyond that, or they don't really see it as it for now, so more building the case around complicating it. Instead of knowing, learning is perhaps more in focus here, because every activity we do have a learning. It's not just checking out that our knowledge was right, it's seeing what our, our learning can provide. And then improvising, of course, in this way uh, becomes also one of the, I would say, uh, central aspects that we have to do uh, as leaders. So it comes to culture, it comes to how the whole organization is set and how these eco-innovation ecosystems of both parts really works. Creativity and innovation is not a quick fix. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy, it takes uh, resistance and a lot of tears. So we need to uh, innovate constantly. When I speak of creativity, I see innovation as a part of creativity, as a necessary part, because creativity in workplaces doesn't have any worth or value if it doesn't lead to something. We know that being creative and innovative leads to economical growth. I'm also interested in how it affects humans. So my res in my research, I looked at how it affects our well-being. The more creative uh, we get, the more innovative we are, uh, the less is our stress at work. Do we get any happier? <laughs> yes, we do. I found uh, that it's creativity and innovation that leads to better well-being. Not that strange, right? Because when we are feeling too well, when it's too good, we have a tendency to lie on the couch and take things for granted. You need time to develop ideas, otherwise it will get like a punishment. Probably all of you know that Google gives their employee one day per week to innovate. The important thing is that management makes it a strategy and a structure. Is it enough to have time? Not really, unless we don't have a system, a creativity system, that follows up the creativity, our ideas, and helps us to go from idea to uh, innovation. We have uh, humor, it's very, very important, it's playfulness, uh, to use our humor as a way to innovate. Um, when we are innovative, 
we try out new things, right? We are on uh, unknown territory. And as such, it's, it's kind of um, unlogical to expect that we would succeed on our first try. It's quite logical to expect that we will stumble. We often, maybe on an unconscious level, contribute to creating an organizational culture that actually sees mistakes as something bad. Not many employees that I have met can honestly say that, oh yes, I am encouraged to make mistakes. But we need that. It's an important part of the learning process, the trial and error, and the risk taking. We need the support of the leadership and the co-workers when we are trying to find some new solutions, new ideas. In relation to creativity and innovation, we know that external rewards, such as praise or money or something uh, similar, can actually uh, create jealousy and intrigue in colleagues. It's much, much better to reward people by giving them intrinsic motivation, that is making the work fun and challenging. We love habits and when they, become, when they become too safe, when we become too comfortable with habits, we tend to um, not see the world as it is. We know that this is one of the factors that can make big, big companies fall. 86% of the executives say that innovation is important for the success of the business. Okay. However, only 6% of them are satisfied with the innovation performance on their company. Why are we so poor when we think it's so important? People want to stay in a creative environment where they are challenged and where they get to do new things. Innovation is important because we cannot only save cost anymore. Saving cost will not lead us to greater markets. It fosters on the individual level and the organizational level, a growth mindset. Innovation is creativity and execution. We have to be aware and we have to stay out of being critical. Creativity, finding the right problem, identifying, understanding. What is really the problem? Creating insights, understanding. Then we try to solve it. Then we move into execution and try to make something out of it that becomes a business case for our company. By building positive mindsets and good behaviors, we encourage innovation. Mm -hmm.